Hi there! Uh, today I would like to vlog a little bit about um, some aspects uh, of a few composers that I find mostly thrilling and fascinating. But first of all I have to say something about my previous blog about tonality and sounds because I was talking about the 12 tone technique uh, developed by Arnold Schoenberg and uh, I was saying something that uh, it was not such a necessary step to take because uh, composing music is uh, um, as much dealing with sounds than with tones. Uh, but um, actually Arnold Schoenberg uh, did know that because he has even written a work called uh, Farben uh, which is mainly a composition based on the um, song colors of the different instruments and he, he did even have um, experimenting with what he called uh, um, color melodies um, farben, also melody farben uh, when he was making such um, um, combining the sounds in of the orchestra instruments, so uh, it's not that simple that uh, Arnold Schoenberg did not um, know about the, the color, uh, the sound aspect of making music, so I really have to apologize <laughs> for that, but uh, now to the subject of today, um, yeah, we all have our favorite music, of course, um, me too, and, uh, and you don't need to have a reason for it, it's, um, of course not, it's, um, you don't have to know why, but uh, I, uh, since I'm a composer, of course I do analyze uh, some compositions by my favorites, uh, this because I'm curious and uh, what I find they all have in common um, is that it's never very typical music uh, for their time. Uh, like uh, Bach is not necessarily very typical Baroque music and uh, Sibelius is not really very typical romantic music uh, like yeah, many other co contemporaries of their time. Um, and so on. Beatles is obviously not very typical rock group, or at least in the in the later period of their um, career. Um, so um, I, when people ask me what sort of music do you like, and I say it's I, actually I like all every music that's not typical, because very typical music like the very typical jazz or typical baroque or typical that's really you know very this, that style I find it really a little bit disappointing because um, it's not very challenging because they are it's only you know uh, confirming uh, the style uh, not uh, challenging uh, the style uh, so um, uh, to start with um, Bach of course um, I um, yeah um, my, one may say he always have a sort of a ambiguity to his music or a Mona Lisa smile uh, and it's so simple that he's uh, making every decision for the next step in his music is always choosing the most uh, almost most unexpected. Uh, step, um, he's not making anything safe, maybe in a few works of course, but um, uh, when you're playing Bach on uh, keyboard or uh, violin or uh, any instrument, you very, I think all musicians, they um, um, will find out they have to really curl their fingers very much because he's making not so um, He's not making these typical triads uh, passages uh, on, uh, or scale, or if you're making a triad or scale, he he mostly put a um, um, very unexpected um, note within. So you, if you are not very aware of, of your playing, then you it's very you really um, you are <laughs> making many mistakes uh, because uh, he's always uh, it's sort of unexpected um, moves all the time. Uh, 
uh, and that's fascinating because uh, Mon, yeah, when people talking about Bach, they are talking about it uh, like the most um, perfect or well shaped uh, uh, symmetrical um, music. Uh, that's so you know, uh, like um, the architecture of the music is so. Um, uh, perfect so you know um divine almost you know some, but <laughs> what well, i find the fascinating thing it's uh, he's um, that he's actually not he's uh, making you know uh, unexpected choices he's making sort of unsymmetrical uh, music all the time in the most symmetrical way so um I find the greatness of Bach is uh, doing uh, the most, uh, yeah, symmetrical, well-shared music or uh, the most obvious music in the most obvious way, because he's uh, always, um, you know, um, making choices, personal, individual choices for the next step in every of his work when he's starting out with something, and you can really. Um, it's actually very easy. It's, you don't need to be so over analytic with it, and or you don't not even be very into music theory to to see that because uh, you can hear it and um, uh, you can always you know uh, he always have something up his sleeves. And yeah, and so uh, I think uh, for. Every great artist, actually, uh, no matter if it's uh, music or literature, or painting or whatever, they, what they have in common, it's uh, actually this ambiguity in Mona Lisa smile. Uh, that's uh, always make them fascinating over years, and and it will not stop. So, um, and uh, you can of course uh, explain it in a very complicated uh, theoretical. Uh, uh, Way, but um, I find this not necessary because uh, you you actually, uh, actually is very a few uh, example is very easy to see what they had in mind, uh, and then uh, to, you know, when you're talking about this composer, uh, he um, ha have also exactly this uh, unexpected or very personal individual. Um, um, moves uh, or decisions uh, in this uh, music that's uh, uh, it's so fascinating and uh, Chopin is also a composer many people are thinking it's a very beautiful compositions and it's so very harmonic and well shaped and that's sort of um, yeah but but you have to be aware he's really challenging uh, the, his music very much because uh, you have these very famous 24 preludes for uh, in every major minor tonality and uh, that's a very um, like his uh, autobiography uh, uh, when uh, because you find so much of his um, you know way of uh, using the piano uh, you like you can find etudes like preludes uh, yeah like the b minor uh, prelude is very technical uh, difficult uh, very challenging and also the of course the um, uh, f sharp minor which is uh, well, you know a nightmare to learn uh, but uh, you know when you are making like 24 preludes in every minor on um, major tonality you are it's like you are exploring every chord or uh, tonality like uh, c major what can i do with c major f major a minor a minor d minor so you go on and he is like having you know i find it like uh, you know christmas presents when you are you know unwrapping every uh, tonality uh, in the most uh, uh, you know brilliant way because they are very short and he are you know starting on like very you know um, uh, have he has al always one motive or theme that uh, that he you carries through you know like the first one he carried.
carry it through this tonality of C major in a very, you know, uh, it's so um, natural way. Um, but uh, and they also many of the producers really like to serve you the 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 tonality uh, is the key. He, like in the F sharp uh, major prelude, he's like, uh, you know, F sharp major three times, he plays it just the chords, you know. It's not uh, even a theme or melody because, uh, of course, he has uh, some features uh, in the left hand. But, you know, he's presenting F sharp major. But before that, he's like, you no, know, presenting F sharp major. It's not, that's uh, actually more or less what's happening in the prelude. And of course, you have a uh, um, middle part, very beautiful middle part uh, when they are making sort of, um, yeah, slightly a contrast. But um, what's uh, most fascinating uh, and uh, the most ambitious prelude must be the e, a main minor prelude. Actually, a minor does not appear before the end. Not even the A is a. Um, you, you know, it starts off like that. So A, you have a A sharp. No, no, this is supposed to be a minor. That's the A tried. Of course, so and it's supposed to be an A minor prelude, but uh, he starts off like that, which not. First of all, it's not very uh, typical romantic music. Uh, you know, it's like you know, gloomy, uh, sort of um, uh, apocalyptic or very uh, dark, you know, horror movie fit into every horror movie. It's no A, a not even the, the A is, it's A sharp. You have this, uh, you know, snake-like uh, crawling, crawling, crawling uh, figure. And then you have this sort of melody, which uh, are, you know, coming from uh, far distant. You have the feeling the melody is uh, taking place on the other side of the planet from this one. And there's still no way here. That's the first time you have an A, but uh, it's not actually very uh, connected to uh, A minor um, tonality. Uh, it's uh, not even having sort of no tonality at all before actually you have sort of C. C major tonality, C minor major, uh, which, yeah, not very, just slightly related. And so it go on, it's uh, creeping, crawling uh, stuff, um, but it's, uh, you know, um, English horn-like melody, morning, this morning melting, uh, uh, and so, and still no A major. No, at least we have a, an A here, but what we're hearing underneath, yeah, it's uh, starting to slightly look like, or sound like an E major minor here, but then we have this, you know, very ambitious uh, part, uh, is, it, uh, is it sort of F major or uh, E minor, or is it, uh, yeah, what do you have here? And then, you know, this English horn melody uh, making, you know, sort of a uh, first time when you're playing only the melody and this uh, threatening uh, morning uh, accompaniment uh, is um, taken away. Uh, so, and then you have a, you know, the final uh, reminiscence of it. And then, then sort of the melody is w winning the competition. Uh, 
you know, and you can sing out the last phrase. And then... Making a very clear uh, A major uh, cadence, which, of course, leads us to... A minor. It's quite a journey. He finally made it. So, uh, that's a typical example of uh, ambiguity and unexpected moves uh, in music. And there are so many more. And Sibelius uh, have it all the time. But uh, that will be, yeah, for now. Uh, so, um, maybe I could make an own vlog on Sibelius. Uh, it's really a treasure um, box of treasure uh, Sibelius when it comes to ambiguity. So, thanks for now.